And maybe our Big Bang was created by an extraterrestrial in a white lab coat. If you have a friend in another galaxy far away, at some point in time, that friend will be carried away from you at a speed larger than the speed of light. So you won't be able to get any Instagram updates <laughs> or from that friend beyond a certain point in time. How did the universe start? You know, like, we know that uh, the universe is expanding. So if you reverse the movie back in time, uh, it was denser and denser as we go back in time. And there was a point in time when the density of matter and radiation was infinite. It's called the Big Bang. That's when everything started. There was an initial point in time. And by the way, this philosophically is not very satisfying because you want to ask, what happened before the Big Bang? And Albert Einstein actually resisted the idea that there was a beginning in time, even though this is the version that appears in the Old Testament. Hmm. So what happened before the Big Bang? That's a fundamental question. And, uh, you know, nowadays when I think about it, I realize, you know, Einstein's theory breaks down at the Big Bang because the density of matter and the curvature of space and time become infinite. But we know that if there was a theory that unifies Einstein's gravity with quantum mechanics, another pillar of modern physics, we would have potentially understood what happened before the Big Bang. It's just that we don't have that theory. So then I can imagine that maybe there was a quantum gravity engineer. It could be a scientist or an engineer from another civilization that had that knowledge and knew how to create a baby universe in the laboratory. And maybe our Big Bang was created by an extraterrestrial in a white lab coat. That's a possibility. All I'm saying is this is a fundamental question. Of course, religions have another take as who created this thing mm -hmm. that we live in. By the way, one thing to keep in mind, it started really simple. You can describe the initial conditions of the universe on a single sheet of paper. And it became complex because of gravity. The universe was uniform to start with to one part in a hundred thousand. But then regions that were slightly denser than average acted upon themselves by gravity and, and condensed to make bound objects like the Milky Way galaxy that we live in, inside of which you have stars like the sun. Mm -hmm. And next to which the debris from making the star uh, co coagulated to make a planet like the Earth that we are sitting on. So all the complexity we see on Earth that you cannot summarize, you know, in thousands of books, um, all of that came from very simple initial conditions. And if I wanted to create the simplest universe possible, ours is pretty much it. And so what started it is a good question. And how did we get all this mess that we see around us, including politics, you know, from those very simple initial conditions? If you just start with those conditions, you'll end up with all the mess we see around us, which is amazing by itself. How, so, do, how do we know that the universe started with the Big Bang? Because we can see what is going on right now. It's expanding. Mm -hmm. and so is the expansion, is the, ex so is we the go expansion back like a shock wave? No, it's actually, uh, the way to think of it is like a balloon Mm -hmm. that is blown up. So the surface of a balloon is two-dimensional. There are two dimensions that describe it. That's the only difference from uh, space itself expanding in the universe because that is in three dimensions. But other than that, if you imagine, you know, marking dots on the surface of the, of the balloon, they would recede away from each other as the balloon expands. So the same, in the same way, galaxies like the Milky Way that are spread all around the universe, they are receding away from each other because space itself is expanding. So does that mean every second distant galaxies 
planets and stars are increase are are moving away from us, increasing in distance, as if they don't like us. But it it, it gets more extreme than that. Uh, when I came to Harvard, I gave a course in cosmology, and one of the students in my class told me that what I said in that class motivated him to pursue a new line of research that ended up concluding that not only the universe is expanding, but the expansion is accelerating over time. Uh, that student was Adam Rees. Uh, That's factor one of the, theory. He got the Nobel Prize for it together wow. with two others. So we now know that other galaxies are running away from us at an ever increasing speed. And this, ha this started when the universe was roughly half of its current age, that th it started to accelerate. It's as if gravity is repulsive. And you can understand that because when you look at Einstein's gravity, you know, if the vacuum, the vacuum is what is left after you remove all the matter, you know, in a box. If the vacuum itself has some mass per unit volume, some mass density, that creates repulsive gravity according to Einstein's uh, theory of gravity. And that's what we see in the universe. So we realize that the universe initially expanded, it was the mass budget was dominated by matter and radiation, but once they got diluted enough, the vacuum started dominating and the vacuum is causing this accelerated expansion. So that's what we see now. And what it means is if you have a friend in another galaxy far away, at some point in time, that friend will be carried away from you at a speed larger than the speed of light. So you won't be able to get any Instagram updates or <laughs> from that friend beyond a certain point in time. It's just as if the friend fell into a black hole because the same thing happens if your friend crosses the event horizon of a black hole, the image of that friend fades away and freezes at the last frame of that friend when they cross the horizon. So that's the only information you have because no information can escape from inside a black hole. Mm -hmm. And the same is true for crossing the cosmic horizon, the, the edge of our universe by a friend that you have in a galaxy that is receding from us faster than light. And you might ask, how is it possible for something to move faster than light? Because after all, the speed of light is the maximum speed that any material object can move at. Well, that's true, according to Einstein, only when you deal with things close to you. But imagine again this balloon and imagine ants walking on the surface of the balloon. So the ants walk at some speed, but if we blow the balloon fast enough, then the separation between the ants will grow faster than they can traverse it. So in fact, they will never be able to communicate with each other if the balloon is expanding too fast. And the analogy is with the expansion of the universe the ants are light partic particles of light, photons. So they move at some speed, but if space itself is expanding fast enough, even light cannot bridge the gap that is being opened between us and the friend that is uh, receding from us after some time. So we will be left lonely in the distant future. We will be surrounded by our own Milky Way galaxy. And beyond that, there will be darkness, emptiness. There is a very lonely future for us, mm -hmm. which I don't mind. I actually like space. You know, I hate crowded uh, <laughs> environments. And being here, I mean, I was born on a farm, as I told you, I'm very much connected to nature and I enjoy whatever nature brings to my doorstep. No matter where you're watching Sean Ryan show from, if you get anything out of this, please like, comment, subscribe, and most importantly, Share this everywhere you possibly can. And if you're feeling extra generous, please leave us a review on Apple and Spotify podcasts.